Hello, my name is Ryan Kuhlenbeck from Seekin Vehicles, uh, here today to continue the education series brought to you by Sector 111. And the topic for today is going to be root supercharging, where we're going to go through the various components found in a supercharged engine system, as well as their individual functions and uh, kind of a couple examples of different pieces in the Lotus world. In front of me you'll find two examples of the primary component to the, to the systems today, the superchargers themselves. On your left is a TVS 1320, the larger of the superchargers in this uh, market. And on the right is the MP62, uh, both produced by Eaton and sold through various names. The primary purpose of a supercharger is to take air and force it into the engine at a higher pressure than it would normally be found in ambient. Um, by having this increased airflow into the engine, you're able to then increase the fuel flow into the engine. And then through the combustion process, you can release more energy uh, from that, that additional fuel, which then turns into more power out of the crankshaft in a faster car. So here in front of me is the MP62 supercharger. Uh, the way the system works is air is drawn in to the supercharger through this main, op this primary opening right here, and enters into the set of the two rotor blades. You can see them spinning inside of there. What happens is the rotor blades actually attempt to capture a fixed amount of air per blade set, per revolution, and then force it into the engine, uh, engine's intake manifold. And what happens is this system pushes more air into the manifold than what the engine would naturally consume during its naturally aspirated uh, operation, which builds pressure. So as that pressure builds in the intake manifold, uh, there's also heat that's built inside of the intake manifold, and these two pieces are keys to the limits of the supercharger. Unfortunately, you can't build pressure without heat because of the laws of physics. As much as we hate Isaac Newton for them, he is right. So this pressure buildup and heat buildup actually are also the limits of the supercharger, which we'll go into right now. So if you look down into the supercharger itself in the valley here, you'll see along the edge of the rotor blades where my finger is, there's a sealing surface there that as the rotors mesh with each other, they uh, form a trapped volume of air that's attempting to be as solidly sealed as possible. But once you start getting up to, in this blower's case, around 14, 15 PSI, it can't keep all of that air volume sealed once it's forced, once it's uh, exposed to the pressure in the intake manifold. And you get some leakage back out and around the rotors, around the edge of the case and in between them. So as they're spinning, not all of the, you know, some of the air is going into the intake manifold, but some of it actually comes back into the induction side of the supercharger as well. And that's what, that tied to a couple of airflow-based things and some uh, flow numbers are what limits these superchargers. So the Gen 5 superchargers are roughly limited to around 14, 15 PSI, and the Gen 6s can get up to closer to 21, 22 pounds of boost. So the other size of a supercharger uh, from a limits perspective is how fast you spin this, uh, this particular drive mechanism here. So that's governed by the pulley sizes that you install onto the front of the supercharger. So and what, what counts here is the ratio of the diameter of the pulley on the supercharger versus the diameter of the crank pulley, which is driving it. So as you drive the supercharger harder and harder, it starts to make, uh, try to flow more and more air. But once it reaches those pressure limits that we talked about, you get into situations where either the temperatures increase so much that the rotors start to grow and they actually hit each other in the case walls and start to deteriorate that seal where they're trying to uh, hold the fixed volume of air inside the rotor blades. Or the bearings itself inside of the supercharger start to give out. So the limit of this particular supercharger uh, for an OEM type application is usually rated for around 14,000 RPMs and for an aftermarket um, maybe a shorter life cycle if you will because of the application they can go as high as 16,000 RPMs. The Gen 6 superchargers again one of the other improvements they made was they were able to increase the RPM capability of the superchargers. These blowers will go up to uh, north of 20,000 RPMs before they'll run into case clearance and or bearing issues. And it depends on the, you know, the application and how much pressure is going through them as well. So the next component in the system that we're going to talk about is the intake manifold. So you need a system to connect the air exit of the supercharger to the entrance of the engine to get the air into the motor. And it also has to perform a couple of other functions.
in the Lotus applications, and what is usually common in most engine applications, is that the intake manifold actually supports the weight of the supercharger. So the manifold is bolted to the cylinder head flange, and the supercharger is bolted to the manifold. So this is a structural component within the system. Uh, it, the primary focus, again, is to deliver air coming out of the supercharger and into the cylinder head. It has to be capable of withstanding not only the structural loads of the blower, but also the pressure inside of it and temperature. So you usually will see these as relatively thick castings uh, to be able to handle that kind of load. Uh, Within the intake manifold family, you'll have two basic types, one like this one, which is set up to be non-intercooled, and one that will have the provision for a heat exchanger to be put into it to intercool the system. Um, the purpose of that heat exchanger is to take that temperature rise that we talked about earlier that naturally occurs with the increase in pressure and try to reject that heat out so that you have a denser, cooler air charge going into the engine. Uh, Basic rules with when you need an intercooler and when you don't are, you know, once you get up above 6, 7 PSI of boost, which is a half an atmosphere on top of the normal levels, you start generating enough heat into the engine where you really need to start considering a, an intercooler. The Katana kit stays below that level to be simple, affordable, light, and the whole Lotus approach. Uh, but if you start making more power than that, you do need to start considering intercooler similar to what the uh, supercharged factory cars have on them, where they're making higher than 6 PSI of boost. The next piece that we'll discuss today is actually just a simple one, the pulley that actually drives the supercharger. Uh, relatively straightforward. There's only a couple of key considerations that you need to worry about when choosing these things. One is that it has enough um, surface area between the belt and the pulley itself to handle the load of the supercharger. Oh, at full song, uh, a fully loaded MP62, especially in an intercooled application that's trying to make 14 pounds of boost or so, can rob as much as 40 horsepower from the crankshaft. So this little pulley has to have enough friction between the belt and itself to handle 40 horsepower. The other piece of the puzzle we have to worry about with the pulley is the relative ratio of the diameter of this pulley versus that of the crankshaft. And that's what determines the RPM of which the blower spins. We talked earlier about how when you overspin a supercharger, you create excess heat and you wear the bearings and you could even get into a condition where these rotors expand and hit the case. So sizing a pulley is a very important task when you're integrating the supercharger. So the final piece in the system that's specific to the supercharger that we're gonna talk about today is the bypass disassembly. So because the engine doesn't always run at wide open throttle, you need to provide a mechanism for air to escape around the roots, blower, the supercharger itself, and enter into the engine without making boost. And this is so you can drive around on the highway at normal drivability and things of that nature. And the way this system works is this uh, little can here has a diaphragm inside of it that actuates this lever. So if I push down on the lever, you'll see it move there. And if you look down inside of the supercharger itself, you'll see a little valve in there. And as that lever moves, it opens that valve. And that valve leads into a passage that air comes in to the supercharger, except it goes through that passage here, and it exits out through here and into the engine. So effectively bypassing the rotor blades. So the bypass valve is controlled by a hose that connects this little port right here to another port uh, that sits in front of the supercharger. When you go to wide open throttle, the, that section of the supercharger goes down to a very, very small amount of vacuum and pressure in there becomes almost ambient. And when that occurs, the, it allows the bypass to close. So when you're running around at idle, there's vacuum present inside of here and it pulls this open which opens the bypass, which allows air to go into the engine. Once you go to wide open throttle, there's no longer enough vacuum here, and this is released. It seals up that hole, and all the air goes through the rotors and into the engine. It's a pretty important piece of the, the system from a drivability perspective. So now that you have a basic understanding of the various components involved in the supercharger installation, we'll continue our series with our next video, which will be how to pick the correct supercharger for your application. So we'll get into some of the, the math equations that actually govern uh, the combustion events and power output of an engine. It should be interesting for me to try to be able to explain to someone. But for today, uh, I'm Ryan from Seeking Vehicles here at Sector 111. Thank you for your time. And as always, if you have any questions, please give us a call.